Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of Watts Collection. Uh, today what I want to do is talk about some Armstrong watches. Uh, most of these are older ones from the early part of the 21st century, the early 2000s. Uh, but I found some interesting ones. I thought, they, thought you might like to, to know about them. Armin Strom, some time ago I did a, uh, a video on Armin Strom watches, and these watches are different than those watches. Plus the fact that the modern or the newest Armin Strom are also different than those. And so this is, they were sort of, I think, in the middle of the, the development of Ar Armin Strom watches. But they've always been... Uh, watches that I've liked because they seem to be a couple things. One, they pay attention to the horology, and second of all, uh, they're well made. Anyway, we'll take a look at it. Now, the first one I talk about is one that's the only one that is does not have an Armstrong movement in it. Uh, it's called the Armstrong Racing Chronograph, and it's got a uh, it's got a 44 uh, millimeter case dimension made out of titanium, automatic movement. And my guess is, and this is the guess, it's a, it's an ETA 7750 Baoju ETA 7750, which is actually a pretty good movement uh, for a chronograph uh, with an automatic. Uh, 46 hours charge to it, chronograph and date complication, smooth bezel silver dial uh, and then exhibition case back which is you turn it over and you can see the movement now the msrp on this is eighty six hundred uh, dollars which is not a killer high price as far as luxury watches go but i found some that were available for around a little over three thousand dollars i don't know whether these are negotiable or not you should always try though uh this one was at a place called the uh, Real Real. I think, in fact, both of these were. And these were a couple different different ones. And they're uh, something from the more Russia racing thing. It was something between, I think, the English and the Russians at one time. This some kind of race they had. And it looks like it's sponsored by uh, Virgin, Virgin Airlines, and sort of their other industries and stuff. But it looked like a very interesting watch. Now, I've mentioned a number of times I'm not much of a chronograph fan. I don't have anything against them. Uh, I, I just don't like watches with a whole bunch of dials on them, sub-dials and so forth. Uh, this one also has something that I, I've seen a lot of sub-dials at 9 o'clock. You don't see too many uh, date windows there. And this one's got a little round date window over at 9 o'clock. I like the looks of it. Uh, I'm not much for black dials. Uh, even though a lot of my watches have black dials, just because, again, it's a matter of seeing them more, more or less clearly. Um, but both of these watches, I thought, you know, they might be interesting to you. Okay, now now we're getting into the what I consider sort of the real Armstrong in the sense that they have their own movements and they're really excellent horology, even though this is for, this one is called Armstrong Racing One Week, which means it, you wind it up and it'll, it'll, it, it'll last a week. Thing I like about it is 18,000 um, semi oscillations per hour. It's not one of these horse racing things, but it's a, uh, and it's one of their own movements called the ARM-09. Um, minutes, uh, small seconds, hours, and power reserve indicator. This watch is just flat out interesting, I think. And it's 27500 and they're very hard to find. 27500 is a lot of money for a watch. <laughs> so... I always look for ones that are either pre-owned or used or at some kind of secondary market. But this is one of their this is one of their own movements. And again, I think most of these I think are out of sort of out of print. Um, anyway, but they're good watchmakers. Now this next one I really like. Uh, the price isn't a killer price. Uh, it's an Armstrong Regulator Earthwatch. Now they had these. 
this series, I think on the last one, did a, re uh, a review of the Armstrong watches. They had earth, water, and something else. I don't remember what they were. And I think this one was sort of part of that. If you look at the new ones, they, they don't seem to have gone that route anymore. Uh, but this is uh, Armstrong Regulator Earth Watch Caliber ASR of 05, hand wind uh, again. And it uh, has a movement with an off-center off -center indicators and retrograde date. I like that. Um, and I, for a hand date, uh, this is one of the most interesting hand dates I've seen. Uh, from about 10 o'clock down to around 4 o'clock, you can see the, the days of the month. And so it goes through the days of the month and pops back uh, in a retrograde. Uh, and then you have the hours um, and minutes. I think, you have, in fact, the one at 6 o'clock, I think that may be minutes and seconds. It's hard to tell. There's a lot of information on that watch. Um, and it's an interesting watch. I like that a lot about it. And uh, you flip it over in the back. And again, it's one of their, uh, one of their own movements. Uh, this is a regulator. It's a inference. It's the French term. Uh, Regulator is pretty much the same, so I'm pretty safe. And they refer to it as a watch with a non-coaxial hour and minute hands. And, and simply what that means by coaxial, I mean, you have a, the one I have on now. This has got hours, minutes, and seconds. This is called the referred to as the center second. This has a triaxial, I guess. It has the hour, minute, and uh, seconds all on the same axle, uh, whereas this is non-coaxial in the sense that they're not all on the same axle. Uh, so, uh, MSRP was 18700 I found this one. It was $7,195. Uh, for a, we'll say mid-price or in a mid-area, uh, looked, like looked like an interesting watch to have. Now, this next one, um, we're getting into the more modern ones. And the thing that was interesting about this one, now this is the Armand Strom Tribute, Tribute One Blue Edition. And what they use on it is a motor barrel. And one of the things that a lot of the new uh, Armand Strom have done that, that I like, it's, sometimes it can get messy, but I like the way they've done it. Uh, and that is, you can see a lot of the movement, or at least crucial parts of the movement from the dial. And uh, you flip it over and it's not as interesting on the back, but they let you see what you can, what's there anyway. Um, now they use a, this is hand wound, uh, 100 hours power reserve, off center time indicators. And they have this funny frequency of 25, 200. I think that's like three and a half Hertz or something like that. I'm, really not sure what the advantage of that is. I know some other watches had their, it could have been Omega with uh, uh, with the coaxial escapement that they had to do some changes like that. But anyway, uh, this one uses a motor barrel and a guy, RGM uh, watches have some watches with a motor barrel. And it was originally designed for pocket watches. I think it was an American invention. And uh, what they did is that the, the motor barrel is that the main wheel is detached from the mainspring. Okay. And so the barrel is turning as an entire unit. And if the spring breaks, it's not going to go through the... Um, uh, through the gear train. And that's essentially, it's sort of as more than anything else is to protect the gear train, but it's an interesting horological element, I think, in all of this. Now, again, we're talking about, when I talk about Arm and Strom, this is sort of a, a what, what I'll call a, even a bizarre sample, but it's, to me, by bizarre, I mean it doesn't, they, they have interesting things in these different set of selections. Now the final one, this is one that uh, it's sort of funny. It's 
They made 25 of them. They sold out right away. They're 30, well, 29,500 Swiss francs, which is around $30,000. Um, this watch I wanted to talk about because it, it, it is interesting in one aspect. There's some other aspects of it that are very interesting. I'm going to have something going to be talking about on Monday about that. So I'll save it for then. Now, this is a caliber uh, ASB-19. It's got a micro rotor on the dial side, the Geneva Drive Constant Force Barrel. Uh, again, here you have that uh, 3.5 Hertz, um, 25,200. They have VPH frequency. I like to use SOH for semi-oscillations. It's got a 72-hour uh, power reserve column wheel column wheel date. Usually when you hear column wheel, you hear chronograph. This one's got a chrono. And this, this is what makes it very interesting. By the way, this is only a limited edition of 25. They sold out. You go to their site and it says sold out. It's like, okay, nobody told me there were only 25. Um, what they have here that's interesting now, uh, up at 12 o'clock, I'm pointing up at 12 o'clock, you can see a big red date. And then they have this date, uh, it's, a, it's a hand date, and it goes 01 and some, all the way back up to 31 again. Now, what somebody decided, they because they like using that, uh, that offset main dial, so the, the old hand comes around, and after about seven o'clock it starts getting in the way of the main dial and so what they are uh, the t time telling dial and so what they did is that they have a a little button over there at 10 o'clock a little pusher and what you can do it's a, it works like a toggle if you if the thing is going through let's say you start up at the first second you get down to around uh, uh the 16th and then you go into the 17th and you're going to be clipping that, uh, the, the sort of the big sub dial for the time. Uh, and so it's starting to get in the way. And so what you do, you push that little uh, button over at uh, 10 o'clock and it whoop, goes back up to 12 o'clock. And <laughs> so it doesn't get in the way. Um, but it keeps the, the correct date. It's keeping track of the date all along, even though it's pointing straight up. You, you forgot the date, you want to see what it is, you click it, and so let's say it's the 27th. Of course, it's going to be in a way of the, of the main, of the time-telling dial. But I thought it was a very clever thing for them to have. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's like, usually they'll use, and like on one of the other watches we, we looked at, they use the retrograde date, so it goes down to a certain point and then back again. This one just keeps going. If you don't like it, there you hit the button and it goes back up to 12, so it's out of the way. Anyway, these are some interesting watches, and I, th I think they're ones that are probably most of them, well, not this one, not the, uh, uh, not the Armin Strom Orbit. They, they sold out, <laughs> I, I'm assuming they're going to make some more, maybe not. Um, but there's, uh, Armin Strom has always, I thought, always an interesting watchmaker because they've made some interesting watches, and these are the ones I thought, you have some bargains, and then you have some other ones that are not so much bargains, but very interesting nevertheless. Let me let me know what you think. I want to hear from you. And uh, this is an opportunity to subscribe if you like. Until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of Watts Collection.